as a founder especially for women you get asked a lot about whether this is a hobby or whether this is a business enterprise number one piece of advice for if you marketing with zero budgets is focus on customer retention and i say this often that entrepreneurship is a team sport you can't play it by just you know on the shoulders of a good founder and building that team took me a while and i think uh, one of the important lessons that i learned there is to hire for attitude and train for skill you know so how every single person from our office boy to the founder you know to everyone in between has to be numbers oriented if life is a party we've got its host Meet Snigda Manchanda, the co-founder of Tea Trunk, India's first tea sommelier. Did you know that India is one of the world's largest tea-consuming countries, probably the second largest exporter of tea in the world, and we have with her one of the thought leaders of this industry, Snigda Manchanda. And today she's going to tell us how to build a tea brand, how to build a D2C business. how to build a product that's loved by people not only in india but all over the world she's going to tell us about the strategies involved she's going to tell about her struggles her challenges and she's going to tell us all about what her journey has been like and today's episode of hey entrepreneur how to is all about inspiring women entrepreneurs sitting right here is a women entrepreneur that started from scratch when i mean started from scratch she has been all over the world she studied in sri lanka travel to tea estates across the world study the art of tea making and has crafted the most beautiful tea brand called tea trunk welcome to our channel stick dog thank you thanks and for having me what do we want today right we want you to tell us your story right there are millions of women out there looking for inspiration entrepreneurs entrepreneurs looking at your journey and want to do more with their business want to do more in their jobs Our podcast here, entrepreneur, how to is created to inspire, motivate entrepreneurs to do more, right? We are in the business of brand strategy, and everyone tells you what to do, right? No one tells you how to do it, and as such, our podcast is created to help people know how to do things from the experts like you. These are master classes, and today is our tea master class on how to build a global tea brand. So, now our first question to you is. how to build a tea brand in such a competitive space absolutely i think you know i call myself an accidental entrepreneur because uh, about 11 years ago when i studied tea professionally and became india's first certified tea sommelier my dream was to set up a tea school for india you know because when i wanted to study tea i could not find an institute to study tea in india so i actually started off with the idea of setting up this tea school and a product business was nowhere in sight but when i started hosting these tea tasting events where you know i brought in certain teas from tea gardens in assam darjeeling and you know offered them at different tasting events you know people were like sniga this is great tea i loved it but you know, where can i find it and that's when i realized that some of the best quality teas from india are exported and then they're repackaged under various premium tea brands and then they are sold back in india at 70% premium wow you know so that's when i realized that some of the teas from within india are not accessible to us you know floyd you can find the best quality darjeeling tea from india at harrods in london wow but you may have to struggle to find that today here uh, online you know so how do you make our own teas more accessible became the starting point for starting tea trunk you know so that's when i started traveling to various tea family owned tea estates around assam darjeeling even in the nilgiris and reached out to get these teas from the farmers at fair prices 
then crafted different blends. And that's my area of specialization. When, when I studied tea professionally, I specialized in tea blending. Okay. So basically tea blending is the understanding of the flavor wheel, that what kind of spices will, will work with what kind of fruits, with what kind of flowers and herbs and so on. And that became the starting point to craft unique blends by sourcing teas and different ingredients from different parts of India and coming up with a product line. So literally that's how Tea Trunk came into existence. And, uh, you know, going back in the day, my interest in tea began when I started collecting teas. So, you know, friends, family, whoever would travel abroad at that point in time in the 90s um, would bring back tea as a souvenir for me. You know, so at one point in time, I had teas from China, Japan, Kenya, South Africa, Egypt, and uh, Africa, and of course, India and Sri Lanka. And I stored them in my father's vintage trunk. And then decades later, when I studied tea and came, you know, at the crossroads of starting a company, I decided to name my company Tea Trunk as a tribute to where my love of tea began. So that's exactly how the name came about. And the the idea of setting up a tea school is very much alive. But the journey began starting to make our own teas more accessible and to make teas more fun. You know, today, if you uh, if you go to any city or even tier two city in India, coffee shops are the more like um, social environment wise, the more active buzzing, uh, you know, trend around coffee shops. But those same people at home drink chai and the same people at home drink tea. But Probably in the coffee shop drink tea. Exactly. But it's just more fancier to drink coffee outside and drink tea at home. You know, so that's where I started uh, popularizing tea to being more fun and friendly and accessible so that even the younger generation is excited by green teas and different kinds of green teas. Because... When I started talking about tea, the perception was that chai is for like older people, young people drink coffee and colas, you know, so how do we change that perception? And even today, people ask me, how do you compete with coffee? And my response is, we are not competing with coffee. We're actually competing with masala chai. Like that's wow. how big a competition. Chai. Yeah, we want to get more people to, you know, switch to healthier teas like green teas than just consuming masala chai. You know, so that's been like a snapshot of how I went from studying tea to starting a tea business. Wow, so such uh, great insights, right? So how do we make tea cooler, mm -hmm. right? Because masala chai is sold at, say, 5 rupees. Your mm -hmm. coffee is sold at, a Starbucks is sold at 250 bucks. How do we make it more aspirational? Despite the health benefits obviously being there, right? Coffee is unhealthy while tea is extremely healthy. Correct. Right. So how do we build a premium brand space? So my next question to you is, India, right, is probably the second most, uh, one of the top leading consumers of tea. Correct. Right? Mostly had at home. Mm -hmm. How do we impact behavior at a higher level mm -hmm. such that people find it cooler, more aspirational? Because... Large-scale consumption happens when there is aspirational change, when there is a change in behavior. Correct. So what are your views on how to influence behavior mm. in, a, in a market like tea? So very hard to get people to change their beverage habits. Like, you know, you and I know it's pretty much an addiction of a sort where you wake up and you want to have that first cup of coffee or you want yeah. to have that first cup of tea. So I can keep talking about my teas all day long. I can tell you it's healthy. It's good for your gut health. It's got more antioxidants, less caffeine, all of that. But it would not influence your behavior unless and until you experience it for yourself. And especially tea as a product is such an experiential product that you have to get to try it for yourself and then you will realize that oh actually my stomach feels better today because i had a cup of green tea after that heavy lunch so 
what we started doing at tea trunk is you know when we bootstrapped for the first 4 years and didn't have large marketing budgets sampling became a very crucial tool for us you know that i knew that we have a great product how do i get more people to just try the product and if they could just try the product i know that there's a 99% chance or let's say a 90% chance of conversion like this customer will come back and at least pick up a box of tea so we started doing a lot of free sampling tastings at different events fairs flea markets across india corporate offices you know just asking them that you know would you let us put up a table and just offer a different kind of fun tea experience for your employees today and large corporates are very happy to do that because they're looking for new employee engagement activities to do you know so i think just reaching out to the right audiences and getting them to try the product became that uh, tool for changing behavior and i think that's very important for uh, you know when you're selling something like tea or even when you're selling a product you can't just keep talking about the features like i can tell you best tea made with 100% natural ingredients all of that the features don't excite anyone the minute i start talking about how this would make you feel like if you have a cup of green tea after meals it will help in digestion and you would just feel less bloated and you know happier even even if you have and less sluggish if you have a meeting right after and i think those attributes or talking about those things in a corporate scenario where we're doing like a free sampling got people to come in at least try it once and once they tried it they got more curious about it that oh, okay i didn't like this one but i i want to try the apple spice tea oh i want something with lemon grass let me try the marigold lemon grass tea so i think that is a easier route to changing behavior than just talking about it hey entrepreneurs great insight on how to take a product that's so commoditized tea and make it into a premium product first step create an experience right get people to try you create a sort of curiosity right with your flavors and i think the first step to uh, standing out in a commoditized market is building an experience that tea trunk has done you also spoke about marketing with no budgets right everyone wants to know <laughs> okay can you tell us and you're a brand strategist you have experience being a brand strategist as well tell us uh, how do you market and find success with minimal to limited budgets you know tell us a few tricks you know hacks on what you did and you know besides the sampling part <laughs> i think i've lived experience of how to market with zero marketing budgets because when we were bootstrapped our marketing budgets were negligible you know what we had was a great product and all our money went into developing a great product so we doubled down on our repeat customers you know we focused that we don't have the budgets for new customer acquisition so how do we double down on retention and solidify this piece to build a great foundation for the brand and i think that's when our customers became our brand ambassadors you know i think this is this is this phrase is used very often that make your customers your brand ambassadors but in action it takes a lot of time and effort so most brands find it easier to just spend marketing money to just kind of you know Investors let those money. ads run at scale and acquire more customers but building a relationship with your existing customers replying to every comment making sure you send them a gift on their 25th order with you remembering to send them a special sample that they've asked for or just sending them the upcoming launches and asking them for feedback you know all of these became key engagement points which made our customers our brand ambassadors and i'm going to give you an example during the pandemic uh because tea trunk is based out of goa and goa was a green zone for some time we were uh shipping out of goa we were we did have the logistics partnership up and running okay. except one day which was the you know where if the lockdown yeah in the lockdown we were open throughout and shipping throughout but of course it was slow there were several logistic 
challenges uh, delivery challenges all of that so shipments were going out real slow so on my instagram page there are a bunch of customers who've written complaints that we haven't got our parcels it's been one week i haven't gotten i haven't gotten and before my customer service team could respond and my customer service team was very swamped with other emails and phone calls so before our team could respond there were existing customers of t trunk who went and replied to that customer don't worry i'm sure it will reach you because t trunk is a good brand wow. and you have to trust that it will it will reach you and then someone messaged that i'm i ordered for the first time so i'm not sure it will uh, reach me or not and another customer replied saying that you know i ordered at the same time my parcel came in today don't worry you'll get your parcel and just sitting there and reading that entire thread was so heartwarming for me and also a a very live example of what is the power of your customers who become your brand ambassadors you know so it wasn't just a matter of uh you know my customer service team could have also taken care of it but i think the energy that that conversation brought in really said something about the brand you know so how to market with zero marketing budget number 1 is double down on repeat customers even today at t trunk our repeat rate is at 55% wow. which is one of the largest 55 in- that third one pro- probably the largest <laughs> so that's that's a function of creating the community and creating the tribe around tea you know so everyone loves to connect over a cup of chai and talk about it you know it's social fuel here in india so how do you build that community around it so number one piece of advice for if you marketing with zero budgets is focus on customer retention number 2 is to build that community you need to invest time it's it's going to be a function of replying to every comment it's it's a, going to be a function of creating moment marketing to create you know to invent memories for your customers and how do you do that is by making an exceptional uh, you know not saying that okay here's a 10% welcome discount every single online brand does that but you know here is a special discount because we just noticed it's your 25th order with us you know so i think those are certain things which do take a lot of effort and time but as a as a marketer with small budgets it's worth investing your time in today you know 10 years later the kind of repeat customers t trunk has has built the foundation for the brand i know tomorrow that if i'm going to launch a new tea like i'm going to launch a lotus green tea I know at least fifty percent of my customer base is going to be excited by it and buying it, and that's like a guaranteed sale when you are launching something new. So, I I think um, number one, look at you repeat rate. Number two, build a community. Number three is email marketing is like the underdog for marketers. Wow! I feel. when you when you think you know i don't have the budgets to market on uh instagram and i don't have the budgets for google ads you stop thinking about all these other creative ways that you can reach your customers like building an email database having um a value based newsletter going out to your customers value based being the keyword not spam based absolutely you know so because i was a tea uh, educator tea taster the early newsletters that went were more about like Snigdha is today at the tea garden sourcing spring teas for our next batch of blends. Wow! Or that today we tried this recipe, but it has failed. Uh, we're going to try it again with getting jasmine flowers from another district in Tamil Nadu and see what happens. So, getting my audience involved with me in the process and sending them newsletters about it made them look forward to the next one. and then you know in between we would say that okay now you've seen our struggle launch this jasmine green tea we finally have it live here is the link and here's a little you know 10% coupon if you want to preorder it then the customer is super involved in the making of the product and i can tell you this that most brands don't uh, everyone knows that this is worth doing 
but not many people invest the time in it because it is very time consuming to sit down write that newsletter to put that mindful thoughtfulness into a newsletter you can't outsource it to a copywriter it has to be a function of like from within the brand team someone needs to put this together so most brands will skip the step and say okay no let's just give money and spend on meta and google but email marketing i repeat is the underdog for marketers i think if you build a great email list it automatically supports the first two points which is community building and increasing your repeat rate so i think these three for me have been the ecosystem for growing our customer base with minimal budget well again you know everyone tells you what to do no one tells you how to do it she has told you how to do it brilliant inputs on you know, how to market and uh, everyone says let's delight our customers right but no one does it right it's i use a word called simpossible which is the simple things are the most impossible to do absolutely like sending an email regularly once a week with the right content it's simple mm. but it's impossible to do it consistently right not a fancy designed newsletter but a simple story of how you went to the tea garden and found this new um uh, strand of xyz uh, tea and s- telling that story to someone the simple things are impossible to do delighting them telling a customer on every 25th uh, uh order that he or she needs uh, to get a, a particular discount these are the simple things to do but you are doing it right and uh, everyone thinks the easiest way to do is get money get funding uh, you know spray and pray they say but what you've done is you've built a community right and today's day and age is the most underestimated part of marketing building a community is not about just forming a group right it's about engaging it's about talking it's about having a leader like you who is the thought leader in the community so what you've done is you've built a brand which i define as a business that's remembered your customers remember you get see attention you have newsletters you have stuff you uh, speak at concerts uh, i mean speak at events your customers remember you when they want to buy and never fails to deliver mm. right you never fail to deliver and never fail to delight right it's as simple as this right so tell me one thing you've done all of this you build a brand i want to know your team mm-hmm. right because every big business has an army of uh, uh, great people behind right so what what is your team like and uh, what how do you define your productivity hmm. i think one i personally underestimated the importance of building a good team and i think you know when i look back it's probably one of the mistakes that i made early on not investing and in building a solid team because you can be a great entrepreneur you can be a great founder but entrepreneurship itself is a team sport and i say this often that entrepreneurship is a team sport you can't play it by just you know on the shoulders of a good founder and building that team took me a while and i think uh, one of the important lessons that i learned there is to hire for attitude and train for skill you know so when we looked at it the other way around where we were hiring the most skilled people they may or may not be good culture fits for within my company Absolutely. and then doesn't matter what they may have the highest skill sets but if they're not able to apply themselves or embed themselves within the organization they are not valuable so it, or they can't make a valuable contribution you know so this became my hiring mantra that hire for attitude and then train for skill you know we realized that people who have the right attitude can be trained for the right set of skills whether it's a technical skill set or whether you know it's something that needs to be learned on the job you know for me if i've delegated something either it is done or if it's not done you should inform me about it like i would hear an update about it i think there are very simple expectations around uh, you know my managerial style that i've on day 1 What's when that? you join teachang i actually send everyone like a document on how to work with snigdha and the document is a one pager 
on how I like to communicate, what are the kind of updates that I expect, how often do I expect, focus on numbers, you know, there are certain KPIs that we track every single day. So, you know, being an e-commerce D2C brand, it's a very num. there's like a whole sales engine at play and numbers are at the core of it, you know, so how every single person from our office boy to the founder, you know, to everyone in between has to be numbers oriented. That's, you know, so that's great insight. Sharing this one pager on how to work with Snigdha, I think is a great start for anyone joining the team to just familiarize with themselves with what the base expectations are. Setting and that's, expectations. Absolutely. That's also setting the tone for culture. You know, there's a lot of culture for... Uh, independence which comes with accountability you know so you're responsible for these things these are your kras and you know these are the expected outcomes then how do you go from point a to point b you it's up to you you know nobody is going to like carve out a path for you essentially so i think this is something that i've learned myself on the job because you know having a being a first time entrepreneur, hiring and how to build the right team has been a huge learning experience for me as well. Well, we would love to have that document, right? It's, it's a great <laughs> learning for us as well. So every time someone joins, you know, Katya and Floyd, I think we will show that document. <laughs> you sound like a very powerful women leader with expectations set in, set in the start, you know, hire for attitude, set the right culture. In a world where, for example, the tea industry, the legacy of the tea industry has been driven by... Uh, male entrepreneurs right what advice do you have for women entrepreneurs out there who want to make it and who have made it in a male dominated industry that you are in right so what advice do you have and how to build a business how women entrepreneur how women entrepreneurs can build businesses in male dominated uh, businesses First, I have to acknowledge that I'm so happy to see this landscape changing because 11 years ago when I started Tea Trunk, the entire ecosystem and the support system for a woman founder was non-existent, right? Is so it? it's grown and shaped and I think there's a lot more awareness about it. There are a lot more conversations about it and, you know, even from saying that how do we remove the word female founder to just founder, founder. you know, so I think one, there's a lot of awareness about it. So at all levels of the ecosystem, whether it is at the tea trade level, whether it is at the VC funding level or in between employees, I think at every stage, people have become more aware of women starting businesses and taking them to scale. I think when I started uh, Tea Trunk and as I explained to you, my journey was from being a tea taster to starting a business. One of the things that I tell everyone, especially, is to get a co-founder. And this is, is especially because entrepreneurship itself can be a very hard journey. Lonely journey. Right? Absolutely. And I think apart from, you know, the toll that it takes on you, it's also important to have a very good sounding board who you trust. You know, so at there is, you know, 10 years later after starting Tea Trunk, we can talk about it as a brand. But the early years of starting Tea Trunk, I didn't even know if it was working, not working. And, you know, having someone as your co-founder standing shoulder to shoulder with you, working on the ground with you, I think having that sort of a... Setting uh, the same vis vision. Absolutely. I think could be helpful. It's... But there's also a flip side to where, you know, having multiple co-founders who are not uh, aligned can also be a challenge. So I think there's no one size fits all, but I'm just sharing my personal experience. I would have, looking back, liked to maybe have a co-founder on board to kind of make this journey. You have a co-founder, right? Yes, you just this year. Oh, this year. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I think that's one of the, the, the core pieces of advice that I share with aspiring founders who are women is to look at having a co-founder right from day one. Or if you have the conviction to absolutely do this on your own, then build and invest your time in a, building a very rock solid team. Yeah. You know, having that rock star team is 
is going to be the you know your safety net when you are going through the ups and downs of a business that any normal entrepreneur would you know so that's number one i think number two as a founder oh it, especially for women you get asked a lot about whether this is a hobby or whether this is a business enterprise and i think to each their own you know there are many homemakers who would have a side hustle or there could be many employees who have um, you know a, a, as a hobby selling art and i think that's also a scale of business that should be respected but having that clarity of vision for yourself you don't have to explain this to anyone but for your own self to to tell yourself whether this is a hobby is this a side hustle is this a business i want to scale is this a business that i want to uh, you know reach certain financial goals with i think telling yourself the truth about what you're building is very important you know because then you approach it differently because when you're building a business as a hobby versus when you're building it as a side hustle versus as an enterprise to scale you would take very different steps at each moment in your business so i think that's very important for uh, any founder to have that clarity number 3 would be especially for women to create an ecosystem for support when i started teach chunk i didn't know many founders who were women especially in the tea industry because tea industry is completely male led i mean it's been a legacy trading business Absolutely. for 100 years so you know it's mostly been men but i did found uh, that i did when i started you know meeting more people from the tea industry i did find cheerleaders for tea chunk i would garner the support from within the tea community who appreciate the work that we're doing for tea chunk but it took a while to create that ecosystem of support you know like right from having friends and family who understand why you're working 12 hour 14 hour days wow. <laughs> in the beginning to you know why you're missing certain occasions because you are you have to travel for this particular event i think there are many decisions that you need to take as a founder and each decision you make is a vote towards what you're building and i think people around you and having the set of people around you who understand and value that can be very very priceless i think and i was very lucky and i was very grateful that my parents my friends my family uh, my sister created that ecosystem of support for me to to help me take one challenge and move on to the next one without thinking about you know without doubting it uh, without creating that self doubt so i think people who believe in in you it's it's uh, you know it's said very commonly keep them close but i can't tell you how underrated <laughs> that is it's very important for to you build that ecosystem of support today there are several professional groups for uh can you name them so i think women yeah, can also be sure. a part of them so actually one of the ones in fact we have a goa chapter for it called leap l e a p it's called the leap dot club mm -hmm. and we have a goa chapter for it but it's a pan india it's actually a global network leap, okay. yeah it's called leap dot club it's a global network for women professionals so within women professionals there are groups for women founders and also working women in the corporates and we have a goa chapter for it i think groups like leap dot club where you meet like minded women who are aspiring mm -hmm. founders and building businesses mm -hmm. to scale like you are can be a huge asset in your journey super i can vouch for a co-founder my wife and uh, i started the the company she's the rock star behind the business <laughs> and uh, she's the one who's uh, taking the business to the next level she's the one who's uh, taking the leap Uh, so I can vouch for uh, having a great <laughs> co-founder, and you know, you have always have someone you know supporting you, you know, constructive criticism, you know, someone who you know, is pushing you. I think that's what's needed in business. So people underestimate the power of you know uh, igniting you every day, right? Keep you know being motivated by yourself. It's 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 near impossible to do that every day, but you need someone to you know push you. You know, go out. You know, you need to get it done. 
right or maybe that's not the right the the right decision or it could be hmm. something else so i think just a sounding board sounding board yes that's, that's the word i like to use having a sounding board because you may not or just someone to ask questions about like one of the things as a solo founder i experienced was decision fatigue and i don't know why many founders don't talk about it enough because every single day you're taking high stakes decision absolutely minute after minute and it can take a toll on you it, you know at the end of the day it can lead to you know you taking time to make these decisions and as a founder you cannot afford to do that you know so just having that sounding board that you can talk through the questions you have the concerns you have the doubts you have and supporting each other to arrive at the decision i think can be very powerful wow i think so this has been an extremely powerful conversation that we had here's an example of how you turn passion into profit right so over 100 million cups of tea have been served tea trunk serving the world and she's serving as a role model for so many entrepreneurs out there men men especially women entrepreneurs out there i don't know what's the right word women <laughs> female entrepreneurs but we're going to be very candid here today because we want everyone to take back these powerful words you know take some inspiration from our community you know be a part of a club uh, remember your customers have memorable experiences with them and go conquer the world girls go you can do it and thank you snigda for being part of our podcast here entrepreneur how to this podcast is created to interview inspiring entrepreneurs like snigda that have done so much within the, such a short time taken the leap and inspiring everyone around us thank you snigda and thank you for being a part of podcast here entrepreneur how to